Good day everyone, good morning, good afternoon and good evening. Depending on where you are watching me from, I remain CEO Makamoni. There's a special discussion I want us to have or should I say there's a special topic I want to talk about today. And the title is between the white man's religion and the religion of our forefathers. These words will be very much, pretty much familiar with you guys. It's actually a bone of contention amongst people, people of this generation. In one way or the other, when most people talk about religion, they, they talk about things of this nature. And that's why I found it imperative to bring this to the table today. As a matter of fact, um, this topic was inspired by a couple of things that have been happening um, to me over the years. A um, couple of people have met, what they really talked about, you know. These are the things that has actually inspired me to talk about this. And I know that in one way or the other, you and I need topics like this. A lot of um, confusion, a lot of misconception attached to this topic between the white man's religion and the religion of our forefathers. The other day I heard, uh, I heard somebody talking about uh, we as Christians being brainwashed by the white. The guy was actually suggesting that we should go back to our roots. Some other time I, I was on social media, I also saw some posts, someone suggesting that we go back to our roots. Some were in support, some were opposing it. And this is the reason why I'm here. This channel is about truth and nothing but the truth. Now let's look at it this way. If you have a formula that works, if you have a principle that works, do you try to change it? If there's something you are doing and that thing is favoring you, do you try to change it? The answer is no. Nobody ever tries to put away a plan that works, a, a whatever thing that you do that brings you result. Nobody tries to change it, except you begin to see that that particular thing doesn't work anymore. Now, coming to the religion of our forefathers, was it actually working? Was it actually working? If it was working, the white man wouldn't have gained superiority over them. There is no how something comes, you know, these, these white people, we know they, they enforced their rule over us. That can be understood. But you can never say they enforced religion over us. They didn't come in form of jihad. They came with ways of, of trying to convince us practically. There are so many things they showed us that our forefathers saw that convinced them to want to leave their own religion for the religion of the white man. Now I want to point out some things. Was it not because of the religion of the white man that the killing of twins stopped? Religion of the white man. Because it was the early missionaries that stopped the killing of twins. And then the belief of our forefathers was that twins Having given birth to twins was a taboo. Now, do you still believe that giving birth to twins is a taboo? So I wonder the kind of route you want to go back to. You want to go back to our roots. Is it the using of six, seven human heads to bury people? Is that the kind of route you want to go back to? Let's be guided. Let's not because of the fact that uh, when it comes to Christianity and religion, it's been infiltrated too many bad eggs 
too many people claiming to be called by God why they call themselves and they deceive the gullible. Let's not because of that. The Bible warned us of it. So let's not even claim to be ignorant of what the Bible said. The Bible told us clearly that in the last days many false prophets will arise. It also told us what to do. He said, by their, by their fruit you shall know them. So why are you not trying to know them by their fruit so that you select who is best for you to listen to? No. You don't want to check them by their fruit. The Bible said, test the spirit and see. Okay, I want to ask you a question. For example, I'm pushing this question to the men. If you go to a barber to barb your hair and the barber spoils the hair, barbs you a wrong haircut, Okay, do you now decide to stop barbing your hair? Or do you decide to go back to our roots? You know the ro our roots when it comes to barbing of hair. You know what they used to use in those days. Do you decide to go back to that one because of what happened in the barbing of your hair? Or do you get angry and say you will never barb hair again? What do you do? You keep testing, checking other barbers. This time around you apply wisdom. And you check them. You try to know, see how professional they are before you let them bab your hair. Sometimes you even want to allow them bab somebody first before they bab you. You put in these measures. So when it comes to religion, when it comes to Christianity, it's a way of life. Why do you now say you want to go back to your roots? Because you've been deceived by one fake pastor or prophet. And the truth of the matter is you were deceived because you wanted to be deceived. When you go after prophecies, you want somebody that will tell you the food you ate in the morning. Now you, 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 you want to you conclude and judge a pastor's ability to communicate with God based on what he's able to tell you. And then I ask you, do native doctors too not see vision? Do they not consult and tell you what happened 10 years ago? So what if he's a native doctor on suit? You need to check his fruit. Check what he talks about. Does he live a good life? What, 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 what kind of life does he live? What kind of things does he tell you? What kind of principle does he believe in? Does he have the fruit of the Spirit? There are so many things. Love. You know, perseverance, patience, wisdom, both in his speech. There are so many things you need to look out for. In fact, as far as I'm concerned, I don't need anybody to tell me what happened to, me, to my life 10 years ago. I don't need anybody to tell me what I want is solution. Pray and let the yoke be broken. I have no business with that. Because in the course of telling me what happened 10 years ago, they may tell you something that is not they're not supposed to tell you or tell you something, they, they, they concocted lies. And you begin to think that your grandmother is the cause of your problem or your grandfather or your uncle. Because whenever they check, they always see who is the problem. You don't need to know who your problem is. But you need the solution. The problem will only cause more enmity between you and your family members or your friends. They don't need to tell you. So you see, these are the reasons why we've actually fallen into wrong hands. So instead of saying we want to go back to our roots, we need to retrace our steps and begin to do things right. Change our mentality, change our ideology. And you yourself, you can also pray. Why do you need someone to pray you out? The Bible says in the book of Luke 10, 19, Behold, I give unto you power. To trample upon snakes and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. It gave you power. He said it did not give the pastors alone power, the prophets. But it gave you power. All you need is to make yourself pure before God. Make your ways right before God. Do his will. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. What you know that if someone does to you, you will not take it. Don't do it to someone else. Pray season and out of season. These are the things Jesus told us. Wake up in the morning, pray. Before you go to bed, pray. Once in a while, fast. Because there are some demons, according to Jesus, in the book of Acts of Apostles, that do not go out except with fasting and prayer. Read your Bible. You say you are a Christian. Have you read your Bible from Genesis to Revelation? Have you? Okay, you rely only on what they tell you. Even if you have a pastor and a prophet, you're supposed to know your Bible so that you know when they are getting it wrong. God is not the problem here. You and I, we are the problem. And no matter how much problem we face, God remains God. His principle remains His principle. And His word can never change. So why not make His word the foundation of your life? The pastor you, are, you, you want to backslide, you want to leave the things of God, the principles of God, because you are angry 
the way your pastor treated you or the way uh, the, the church treated you or the way religion has treated you, that pastor will face judgment. The Bible says that the judgment of God will start, start from the church. So do you want to go to hell because your pastor is on his way to hell? Or you think some pastors will not go to hell? Some will. It's not about being a pastor or being a whatever. It's about doing the will of God. The Bible said that many shall come in his name, perform miracles. It means people will perform miracles in the, in the name of Jesus. On the last day, he will tell them he doesn't know them. Despite all the miracles they performed. So we need to look into these things. We need to look into these things. Now, the other day, I boarded the Keke Marua. I just decided to quickly rush down to somewhere in Ago, pick up a, a license plate number I just did from one of my associates. And while we we're trying to negotiate my bus stop, I don't know, something propelled a particular discussion. And you see, everyone in the Marawa started vibrating. They were actually angry with the manner religion has taken over and a lot of abnormalities happening in religion. So one of them said, in fact, he doesn't go to church again. In fact, it's like you go back to the roots. Now they doesn't believe in all this nonsense, all this different rubbish. Well, I let them voice out, pour out all their angers, pour their hearts out, and then I came in. I told them, well, I've heard what you guys said, but can you allow me say something? They said I should go ahead. I said, now, let's be guided. Because one of them said he doesn't even believe in hell and heaven. That look at our country. That you are in Nigeria, you are in hell. You are in the uh, US, you are in heaven. That look at our, how the roads are. Ah, look at everywhere. People are suffering. Politicians are carrying money. Taking it out. Embezzling public funds. The country is, is drowning. Then the pastors, on the other hand, to some of them will be shouting tight this and that. Instead of even preaching righteousness. Some will tell you you're going to be blessed, you do this one, you'll be blessed, you do it, nothing will still happen. Of which that's going to be a topic for another day. The reason why your tithes and seeds don't yield fruit of increase. Because when you sow seeds and all those stuff, you know, there's blessing that's supposed to come with it. I'm going to tell you the reason why some don't see that blessing. Whether it's the fault of the pastor, or the fault, or your own fault. It's going to be a topic for another day. But now, let's go back to what we're talking about. Then, I started um, talking to them. I let them know that we should be very careful how we approach these things. I know so many people are angry, but let's be guided. Heaven is real, hell is real. Let's not blaspheme, let's not speak against God because of humans decide to turn themselves into monsters. Everything was written in the Bible, what's going to be happening on the last days. Say God remain God, no matter what happens, it doesn't change. It's only those that have not encountered him that say there is no God. If you have encountered him, if you have heard voices talk to you and tell you what to do and you do it, and it works, then you know that there is something spiritual, something supernatural that is beyond the realm of this world. Then I started telling them. I told them that they are right to some extent because a friend of mine called me from US and told me that he went to a restaurant to eat with his wife. Getting there, they served him appetizer, snacks, and cook. And before they could bring the main meal, it was already filled. And what surprised me from the story he told me was that when he ate that food halfway, his wife decided to taste his own food because the wife was eating a different meal. And she complained that the food wasn't hot enough. The wife called the waiter and complained. The waiter immediately apologized and replaced that meal the guy has already eaten halfway, replaced it with another uh, plate of hot meal. At the end of the day, the guy couldn't even finish the, the, the second plate. Because it was almost filled. When they were leaving, they only paid for one plate. Nobody will try it in Nigeria. Eh? Niger people. 
they couldn't curse you now. They go first they pity you, and they go they pretend like they they pity you the first time. Say ah sorry, ah I don't know say you could ah sorry, ah, sorry no vex no vex. Make you come to say you no go pay that time. Now you go no say no sorry, no enter their mind. Eh, you no go pay waiting because or make them bring another one way hot when you don't eat this one halfway. So you see, that's a civilized world where things are organized. The guy was also telling me about how he came. Within a week, he landed. His in-law decided to get him a job. He was surprised that four different companies came for him. This is somebody that graduated in Nigerian University and searched for a job for, the, for six years before he traveled. Four different companies. Now, the surprising thing in this story is that why he, he, he actually decided to go for one of the company, the one he felt was the best for him. And they sent him on three months training. And while he was going for training, they were paying him. So why won't somebody say that's heaven and this is hell? So I was telling them this story. I said, they are right to some extent. I said, that is the reason why most people now resort to prayer for the things they're not supposed to be disturbing God about. We pray for visa. Is it not funny? Do you ever visualize a white man, someone from the United States of America, praying for visa, fasting for visa? Someone from UK fasting and praying for visa. So the most the simplest things they were supposed to get as humans, we have to pray, we have to fast to get it because our government refused to do the right thing. Because our country is not working. Why do we even need to travel abroad if our country was working? The other time they did census, they said they were about 200 million. Is that possible? Do you know the, the people, the population of Nigerians scattered all over the world? If anybody was to come back home, Nigerians may have reached 400 million or 500 million. Because there's virtually no part of the world you go without seeing in Nigeria. In fact, in London, there is a street. A street. There's a community for Nigerians. Not just Nigeria, there's a community for Yorubas in London. We are scattered all over. We have community in the in, in US. We have a community in South Africa. We have community in different parts of the world. Because of what? Our country is not working. So, what do you expect for someone who is poor and can't get the basic social amenities that the government is supposed to provide? What do you expect? They have to resort to prayer. So don't blame them when you see them go to church. Because that's their only hope. And you know, in this life, for you to avoid depression, for you to avoid stroke and different kinds of sickness that is attached to overthinking, you need hope. And church brings hope. Religion brings hope. Even when you talk about those fake pastors that will tell you, I prophesy to you, in the next you will be blessed, even if they are fake, at least you are getting hope for that moment. Some of those people may not live to see the following day out of depression, but because of I prophesy to you, somebody here by this time next week you will be a billionaire. You want to live to see if it will be you now. What kills people mainly is hopelessness. If you have lost all hope in life, I tell you, you may not last one week. But no matter how much you are suffering, if you, if you are still hopeful, you will live to see another day. The Igbos have one proverb. And I have to say it in Igbo. And I will translate. Agu unweloli naanya adi Igbo Hunger that has hope does not kill. You see the churches, they are bringing hope. The genuine ones are helping. Philanthropic work, training people in school, helping the less privileged, for the genuine ones. Then for the ones that are gathering people's money and spending on themselves, they are also giving hope. You don't need to be against them. All things work together for good according to the Bible. Who you should blame is your government. If the country works, 
then automatically the fake prophets will be exposed because people will not find will not, will not seek refuge in, in 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 their ministries so many things will be working people will not even have reason to believe most of the lies they tell nobody will prophesy to you to receive visa again or to get green card from any country or give you prophecies that you know that ordinarily even without praying you're supposed to have it normally prayer is supposed to be a kind of communication to answer forgiveness thank god for the things he has done that's why when you see a big man pray pray glory glory thank you jesus thank you Je it's not about those kind of war you see poor man praying look as if he's fighting those tears don't move god what moves god is faith and when you are depressed when you are frustrated you it, it's not easy for you to have faith it's your faith that moves god your faith It's not about vigil. It's not about fasting. Vigils are good. Fasting is good. But if there's no faith, then the vigil becomes sleepless night. And the fasting becomes hunger strike. I started talking to these people. And the moment, at that moment, the marrow was calm and they were nodding head. They said, Yes. They've, they've come to understand everything now perfectly that there's no better way to put it than the way I've put it. That yes, there is God. They believe in God. But mankind has messed things up, especially African leaders. And then I made them to understand that those who we should find a way of removing that are our greatest enemy, our greatest enemies are our leaders. Let's leave the church alone. They are not the problem. Some of them may be part of the problem, but they are not the major problem. If they, are, if they are good hospitals, people don't need to start praying for someone who is sick. Because some of the sickness are not spiritual. Some of the sickness need adequate, ad adequate health system. Adequate health care. The mortality rates of people. The child mortality rates of people in Africa. And check that off. People of the Western world. How many times have you heard someone give birth in the U.S. and they... they, they they lost the mother, they lost the child, and all those kind of stories. But in Africa, once someone is pregnant, especially when you don't have money to go to a good hospital, you will resort to prayer now. Why won't you pray? Because every day you hear news, bad news. Have you noticed that the rich pray, pray less? It's a way to pray. It's not about shouting, making noise, vibrating, jumping up and down. That's not how Jesus taught us. But you can't blame our people. The frustration, the confusion has made them that way. For them to believe that he who shouted more is he that God will hear first. They've come to begin to think that he who vibrated more during prayer is he who his prayer will get to heaven first. We have to be calm. We have to understand these principles. Understand who our enemies are, our politicians. And also understand that we are our own problems. Because when people rise up to want to fight these same people that are fighting us, amongst us, people will also rise up and fight against those who are trying to free us from the oppressor. The greatest form of slavery is mental slavery. Because mental slavery will make you fight those who want to free you from the oppressed. That should be a, a discussion for another day. But on the issue that I, I brought up here today, the white man's religion and our and the religion of our forefathers. Let's be guided. Let's be careful not to create more problems for ourselves. So many people among those who are even criticizing Christianity. You don't even know where you stand. Today you are in the church. They call you again to go and visit one spiritualist that will tell you what happened 10 years ago. You are there. One leg here, one leg there. Can you serve two masters? We are our own problems. If you are for God, be for God. 
stop jumping up and down. Once you find a Bible believing church that preaches righteousness and holiness, because that is the foundation of Christianity. That's what you need to make heaven. Everything you see here will pass away. Money is good, you need it to run life. But that is not the most important if your soul is on, way, on, the, on, the, on the way to hell. So if the man of God preaches righteousness and holiness and does everything to groom people who do the will of God, people who are God fearing, then, then that is the church to be. By their fruit we shall know them. When he says things, they happen. Then you know that God is with him. Remain there and be patient. In the spiritual realm, there is no time. God may decide to answer your prayer. He may manifest in the next seven years. Calm down so that I don't compound your problems. As for myself, I don't know about you. Going back to the religion of forefathers is a no-no. It did not work. It's not working and it will never work. And that is why our forefathers were convinced to leave it. Some of them, at some point, the oracle they were worshipping started killing them. The God of Christians. How many of you has he killed? How many of you? But the same oracle they worship in those days were killing them at one time or the other to the point they start bringing sacrifices to appease the gods. These same gods inflicted pain on them. Afflictions that the white man came with Christianity, the genuine ones, the genuine early missionaries came and through prayer, most of these things stopped and our forefathers saw it and surrendered. And now you say you want to go back. I wish you good luck. You have to find out history. Find out about history so that you don't repeat the same mistakes. Some of these problems some of this idol worship is still haunting some families even till this day in the form of generational cause except for those who have embraced God and liberated themselves through prayer and doing the right thing so many people are still suffering from the sins of the fathers so it's not working and it will never work our God is a merciful God there is no God like him the one mightier than all. In case you are asking me how I knew. Pray that God shows himself to you. God speaks to you. You will feel his presence. You will hear him. I'm not talking about dreams. You will hear him physically. You will hear voice talk to you. Then you will confirm that there is God. All you need to do is to humble yourself. And tell him to show himself to you. He will. People have done so many things. This God just keeps forgiving. Do you try such rubbish? Most of the rubbish we try in the presence of God, even inside church. Some people still offering in some churches. Can you try it with Satan? Can you try it with all those oracles? And still have and, and, and still live. Can you try it? So the God that has compassion, that has mercy, that has love. Is it not the best? These are the things our forefathers saw that made them accept the white man religion. These were the things they saw. There are some people, some of our forefathers, some families, even till this day, people don't live to be 50 years. Untimely death. Serious one. Some, the girls are not getting married. Sometimes the men. Sometimes so there are some of those families, no male child. Any male child that is born, even if they mistakenly born the child, the child will, 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 will die before he gets to 18. Too many issues. And most of these problems, we are say result of idol worship. Sacrifices made to most of these idols. That is why, as an African, and based on the foundation of many families, you will be doing yourself a lot of harm if you don't know God. Because if you don't embrace God completely, don't forget that demons don't die. You see those demons, they will continue to haunt you. Because even the little 
blood and gifts our forefathers were giving them, even though they were still dealing with our forefathers, you are no longer giving them now. So they will be seriously angry with you. Nobody is going to, even some of the places, those things were in those days, houses are already there now, they've demolished those things and built houses. So it's a very dangerous thing for you not to know God, for you not to be prayerful. Because those demons are still around and they are getting angry that they are no longer getting the blood. And you decide to even give them the blood, blood of fowl, blood of the animals. At some point, they begin to demand blood of human being. You see what? You see how dangerous they are? They begin to demand for what you cannot give. But you see our Heavenly Father, the only good God, He knows what we are capable of giving. He knows our capacity. And He always set principles based on our capacity. Is that not a good God? So my, my people, my brothers and sisters, we need, to, we need to really have everything and be careful the way we talk and the way we reason. Before our thoughts turn into action and action becomes a, 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 a way of life that begins to work against our destiny. And you know it doesn't just end with us. Most of these things, whether good or bad, will still be passed on to the next generation. Let's be careful. I hope someone has been blessed by listening to this. So please subscribe to my YouTube channel. By hitting on the bell too, you'll get more and more updates as I drop them. My name remains CEO Makamoni. Remain blessed. Eh? Bye for now.